to another story, and this has to deal with uh, of Facebook of all places and AOC. What's going on? Well, it, it's uh, very similar to a lot of stories that we've been talking about for the last year or so when we talk about deplatforming and RussiaGate and how misinformation and fake news and and let's have fact checkers on the on the Facebook and Twitter and these social media platforms because we've got to protect people from from the misinformation and that's that's the really terrible thing is stopping the bad information from getting out well Twitter recently uh, has made a ban on political ads so part of this was you know a, uh, the internet research agency right the Russian owned uh, sort of data farm uh, had run political ads that ran the the spectrum in 2016 and the big outcry was oh Russia's trying to foment discontent Right, they're trying to divide us by running all of these political ads. So let's just, Twitter's like, we're just not gonna allow fit political ads. AOC championed this decision, um, and it, because it, it really, it speaks to that concern, right, of like, well, we don't want to be, you know, seeing things that look like news articles and contain fake information. Particularly, we don't want to be seeing political ads that contain fake information, and, and when in her, uh, in her address in in the legislature, that's what she said to that effect, right? It, would it be okay? She was asking Facebook, like, would it be okay if you just said somebody's voting record was completely different than what it actually was, or that the the actual amount of support that they get in polling is completely different than what it actually? If you just outright lie, is that okay? And Mark Zuckerberg's response was basically, yeah, we allowed that. Uh, the thing is about lies is. If you're gonna go on record and lie about something and the truth comes out, now you're on record having said something that's untrue. So that's sort of his philosophy for how it should be dealt with. But this pull to ban political ads is being considered by Google and it's now also being considered by Facebook as well. Why is that potentially a bad thing? Well, these social media platforms are the lowest barrier of entry for grassroots insurgent candidacies. AOC's candidacy would not have been possible if it wasn't for ads in the social media space, Facebook in particular. So given this landscape of, well, we don't want to see things that are false, but we don't want to, you know, you know, ideologically, you don't want to infringe on someone's freedom of speech, which is sort of what Zuckerberg's point was. Uh, but at the same time, there's this outcry of, oh, maybe they're Russian bots and we should have fact checkers. And not to mention that, you know, a lot of the official fact checkers that people like Facebook and Google and Twitter have hired have come at the recommendation of the government. In fact, many of them are government think tanks. And so I'm like, wait, so the government is asking private industry to regulate speech because the government can't. And the government is providing the tools with which to regulate that speech. This is going to come back and bite us. So as much as we, th we think, yeah, we don't want to see you know, the Holocaust deniers and saying stuff on political ads. We don't want to see, you know, conspiracy theorists and, you know, all of this stuff that is, you know, it does not do the public any service. We don't want to see that. Well, maybe the answer isn't censoring that because it has a high potential of coming back and really overwhelmingly hurting you. Because if nobody can run political ads, the people who sort of require that lowest barrier of entry to be competitive are going to be the ones that hurt the most. What do you guys think? Well, on the one hand, I'm, I'm glad that Facebook is possibly considering doing a ban on political ads. I mean, that's something that is long overdue because Facebook has such a shady history. And it's and, and look, you know, because because I found out a lot about progressives too. On the other hand, is from social media like on Facebook or Twitter, and you know, it's it's a double edged sword at this point, but. Yeah, I, I really don't know how to really answer this kind of uh, situation because there's a pro and con of banning the political ads. You, you remove mm -hmm. those who are spreading out misinformation, but at the same time, especially for progressives or independents that don't have, you know, super PACs backing them up, unfortunately. You know, I mean, granted, I, I'm against money in politics, but I mean, you know, what's, what's, the, what's the best way a progressive or independent can get their message out there? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. But now you're talking about banning political ads... That's that's all. That's a that's something that can hurt them in in the long run. I think. I don't know, Lainey. We also have to consider, I think, the demographic that is on social media 
versus, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's reading conventional legacy media as well. And if you have a lot of young people uh, who are on social media and that's where they're getting their information from, banning that um, would, be, would be a sea change in how people are getting information about candidates. The other concern that I have about an outright ban is, okay, you ban something, what happens? People try to get around it. So there might be more so-called journalism or content mm. that, in fact, um, really kind of rides that boundary between a report and propaganda or advertising, right. some kind of an advertorial. What happens when suddenly all of these organizations within a community that nobody's ever actually heard of start promoting their events on Facebook, which you can do. You can put up an event page. It's a very good way to, to get attention for an event, and that happens to be um, an event that is showcasing a particular candidate um, or a particular policy. And uh, say, for example, if somebody's doing a referendum, and there's, you know, right. I'm assuming that that might be covered under the Facebook regulation. Um, and suddenly they have the, you know, you start seeing all these events popping up and they just happen to contain information about the candidate or the referendum um, that, you know, contains a lot of so-called facts. I see a lot of people trying to get around this and this could actually create a bit more havoc. Right. And I'm seeing in a live stream chat, too, that there's a lot of talk about introducing the fairness doctrine again and making sure that that comes back. I was just reading about that today. I'm pleased to hear that. Maybe we can do a report that, on that, that sometime. Sh shout out to JJ, who actually said that. All right, that. JJ. Yeah. And he also went on to say as well. Oh, no, that was Mike Sarvis. Uh, okay, but JJ Mike? was also talking about that as yep. well. Human says ban Facebook and we move on. And then uh, Microsoft <laughs> Word uh, technical support. As I always say, Facebook is for posting, not reading. And that is true. But in this day and age of social media, unfortunately, you know, people have access to it. And when they see something posted, a lot of people see something online and assume that it's fact. And that's one of the things that we do here at Heartlands Media. We want to make sure that we go through something that's misinformation and yeah, obviously bring to light truth to it. So we want to make sure that information is not only truthful, but at the same time, we remove misinformation. And, you know, unfortunately, people are going to be using Facebook. And, you know, when, when they see something posted on there, they're going to say, like, oh, well, if it's, if it's on here, then it's got to be true. I, I've said it on the show before, and I'm going to say it again. Here I go. Uh, the way to defeat bad speech is not by trying to ban it. The way to defeat bad speech is with good speech. And I, th I see huge, huge problems with blanket bans on... Uh, political ads, targeted political ads. If you, if you, if the concern is false information could get out, people could use this nefariously. Welcome to life. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to. Ha if you, it will come back and hurt you. Like what happens if you ban? To the earlier point of barrier to entry, right? A campaign that's a grassroots campaign can do targeted ads on Facebook, on Twitter, Google, YouTube ads, relatively inexpensively. You outright ban that. Now the campaign that has the backing of multinational corporations and all that can go ahead and run their ads on Hulu and Netflix and go ahead and run their ads on unconventional television and other platforms that people will see that are monumentally more expensive to have access to. Yeah. yeah. So that's a fair thing? I don't think no, so. I don't, I don't think, think so. that's a fair thing at all. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you know, and then looking at this election too and how it's going to turn out, one of the major things is that you know, you want to make sure that you get the correct information, especially about a progressive that's running for office. And, you know, already thanks to corporate media and the very fact that it has a lot of close connections to the DNC establishment, the sad fact is, is that we're not going to see a lot of news articles or coverage on progressives or independents. Let's just remind, let's just get a quick reminder in 2018 where Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that major upset over Joe Crowley. And what was the media saying? Oh, it looks like we have to brush up on AOC. It looks like we have to do our research on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Because the corporate media, especially even when they have access to social media, they're not going to pay attention to any progressive or, or independent that's running. And so independents have this huge wall to climb over. So I, I do hope that there's going to be some for, so, uh, form of fairness for progressives so that they get their voices out. I mean, we here at Heartlands Media, we've been interviewing a lot of progressives and independents that are going up against incumbents. And, you know, we, we, we've mentioned this before, that DCCC has made it their policy to only support the incumbents. And what does that mean? 
the media is only going to support the incumbents. And a lot of these incumbents have establishment ties. They're very close to the uh, p people associated with Wall Street, big banks and major corporations. And so progressives and independents, especially for this election cycle, have a lot to deal with and to contend with so that they can get their voice heard and at the same time, too, get elected and bring in much needed political reform. Thank you.